Welcome to worship as we gather as a church. All the words you need will appear on the screen and we hope you enjoy our service. We come because we know we are welcome, O oh God. We come in the name of Jesus. We come because you call us by name, O oh God. We come in the name of Jesus. We come to offer you our worship, O oh God. We come in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So it is with confidence that we can come to our Saviour in our words of confession. We take a few moments to recall the week that has been, to come before our loving God and to place our concerns in his care. Shall we be still? Lord God, we come to say that we're sorry for the times when we have turned away from you. We have failed to follow your guidance and direction. 
we have been arrogant or self-seeking. Lord, we know that the plans you have for us are plans to prosper us, to help us to grow and to be your people. Forgive us when we have turned away. Bring us new life and new strength in and through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. And so may Almighty God assure us of his forgiveness in Jesus Christ. May we know the power of his resurrection life and may we go on renewed in the power of his Holy Spirit. Amen. shepherd I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He guides me beside still waters. He nurtures my soul. He, he leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with the hot oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord by my whole life long. The Gospel reading is taken from John chapter 10 verses 1 to 10. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in that by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Good morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, may the words of my lips and the thoughts and responses of all our hearts and lives be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. We all want life in abundance, life in all its fullness. But what is it and how do we get it? I wonder what kind of answers you'd get if you asked people at random what life in all its fullness, life in abundance, means to them. I guess some might say health, wealth and happiness. Others a good family. And if you approach someone who was perhaps unconventionally dressed, they might reply, life in abundance means sex and drugs and rock and roll. But what did Jesus mean by this life he came to give? Life is a key concept in John's Gospel. The word appears 36 times more than in any other New Testament book. From the wonderful opening of the Gospel, where it said of Jesus, in him was life, and that life was the light of all people, to what many believe was the original ending of the Gospel, where John sets out his stall and says why he wrote the Gospel in the first place. These are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name.
Jesus came that we might have life, life in all its fullness. But the fullness of life he offers isn't health, wealth and happiness, despite what those who proclaim the so-called prosperity gospel say, nor is it family, and it's certainly not sex and drugs and rock and roll. So what is it? Well, Jesus himself tells us in his prayer to his Father God in John chapter 17 and verse 3. Now this is eternal life, that they may know you the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. The life and abundance that Jesus offers us is knowing God. Knowing God not as a concept, not as a set of characteristics about him, but knowing God personally. It's nearly 50 years ago now that Jim Panker wrote a book called Knowing God. And this is what he wrote. What is the best thing in life, bringing more joy, delight and contentment than anything else? Knowledge of God. This is what the Lord says. Let not the wise boast of their wisdom, or the strong boast of their strength, or the rich boast of their riches. But let those who boast, boast about this, that they understand and know me. Jeremiah chapter 9. Want of all the states God ever sees people in, gives him most pleasure, knowledge of himself. I desire the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. Hosea chapter 6. What could be more fulfilling and enriching to our lives than knowing the God who created this vast, wonderful and mysterious universe and who loves us with a love that's beyond our understanding? That's a life that Jesus offers us. But how do we get it? The answer is in the verse from near the end of John's Gospel I quoted earlier. These are written that you might believe that Jesus is a Messiah, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. Believing is more than just believing a fact. It's trusting. Trusting Jesus, as the sheep in the ancient times trusted their shepherd and listened out for his voice and followed where he led them. And whether they knew it or not, the shepherd was committed to their well-being and security, just as Jesus is committed to our ultimate well-being and security. Health, wealth and happiness can be so fragile, but knowing God lasts forever, and nothing can snatch us out of his hand. No pleasures that the world may offer us can co compare with the joy and fulfilment there is in knowing God. And that is not something we can grasp. It's not something we have to strive for or accomplish but something we receive as a gift as we trust in Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Let's respond to God's goodness and grace in Jesus. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, the source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us, and rose again? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. 
we believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. My shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. He leads me by the still, still waters. His goodness restores my soul, and I will trust. Loving God, we pray for those whose lives are empty, for all who feel alone and unloved, for those whose lives lack purpose. Lord of love, bring them abundant life. We pray for those whose lives are filled with anger and bitterness, for those who cannot let go of the past and so have no present or future. Lord of love bring them abundant life. We pray for those whose lives are filled with anguish and pain, for those who suffer depression, for those who are afraid to go out, for those who cannot see a way forward. Lord of love, bring them abundant life. We pray for those who live on the edge, for those who watch others enjoy life but are unable to join the group, for those who lack faith, for those whom others ignore. Lord of love, bring them abundant life. We say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
And so we come to the end of our service and we come to our notices. The first thing to say is if you'd like to know more about what we're doing at St Mary's, please do go to our website, stmarysbeverly.org. There you can sign up for a weekly notice sheet and you can find out about all the different activities that are going on. Also, there is an opportunity to join in with discipleship groups and study groups. And if you follow us on Facebook or get our weekly sheet, you can find out more about how you log into those particular activities. We'd also like to say a very big congratulations to Francis and Ben, who have become parents to little Otis, and of course, to Grandma and Grandad, Bron and Gary, and all the family. Also, congratulations to the team that won the quiz night uh, last night on Saturday night. Well done. We're very proud of you. And finally, to say if there are any children who'd like to join us for the children's activities on a Sunday morning at nine o'clock, please do get in touch. Or alternatively, for the youth group at 6.30 on a Sunday night. We very much look forward to hearing from you. And so now, go with God's blessing. May the God who walks alongside us, who holds us, protects us and keeps us, may he surround you with his love and care. May you know his presence with you always. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you and all whom you love this day and always. Amen. <laughs>